hey Alexa, play God is a woman. I, I, I'm just kidding. I don't, I don't own an Alexa. <laughs> hey y'all, welcome back to another video. I know it's been a month. What took me so long? Well, you see, um, I, I, I have no motivation to do things sometimes. Sometimes I just sit there and I'm like, I'd rather play Minecraft. But uh, welcome back to another video. Maybe by the title of this video and the thumbnail, you might be a little confused because it's a bit more vague than my last video. I was very descriptive with the fact that it was very poison ivy. This video, however, was inspired by the fact that while I was working on my poison ivy project, I watched, as many DC fans did, Justice League Snyder Cut, or as I just like to call it, the Snyder Cut, because it's too long to say the entire thing. And watching that movie made me appreciate, well, for one, how long four hours is, and two, the Amazons. The Amazons and Wonder Woman in that movie were beautiful, amazing. The styles, the cinematography, the action, the consequences, and what I really appreciated was this was the the cloaks. Thank you. I lo really loved the fashion of the Amazons. I always have loved the fashion of the Amazons. Wonder Woman's costume in the movies is iconic. The Amazon fashion in the Wonder Woman movie is amazing. And what I really love in any any movie show book series at all is a good cloak because there's nothing like a mysterious cloak to really show the ambiance of a fantasy or sci-fi setting. Not many people in modern times wear cloaks and honestly that's that's depressing. So and after watching the Snyder Cut and finishing my Poison Ivy video I knew exactly what next project I wanted to do and that was create a cloak. And since I couldn't decide on which cloak I wanted to make, because all of them were great, some of them were a bit plain, some of them were really sparkly, some of them were really great, and after seeing, after combining a few cloak designs I found, which I will show here, I decided that I was gonna do a combination of all of them and design something myself. A little bit of how like I ended up designing my own I was an Ivy costume because I didn't really like any of the, the ones I saw except for the one on the Harley on Harley Quinn animated show because I was the most practical and I like practical when it comes to female costumes or any costume. Any costume should be practical. With this project, I lovingly call it the Cloak of the Mascara because it's designed on the principal designs of one of Wonder Woman, uh, Queen Hippolyta, and all the Amazons. And so I guess that this is the the, the project. This is the beginning of the project. Um yeah. But, uh I guess I can close up this video. Uh yes I am not I'm wearing Star Wars merchandise in a Wonder Woman inspired video. I didn't really want to get dressed. I, I've been test doing testing all week. This is the first time I've filmed anything in like five days. Also, I am recording in the workout room, my roommate's workout room, because I every time I watch one on one, it makes me want to work out. Does, does nobody else want to work out and be like a, a badass female warrior after watching <laughs> watching Wonder Woman or any Wonder Woman scene? Or with the Amazons, obviously, as this, as my inspiration has said. Yeah. Well, I guess I can uh, start this video after this intro. So, uh, welcome to part one of the project. Like the lady said, welcome to part one of the video. Now, this is very basic. I don't know what I'm doing, and I started with a fitted sheet that I, that I was given. It's an old one, it had a hole somewhere in there, and I decided that this would be the perfect base fabric to start my journey. But first I needed to get rid of the, the, the fitted elastic part of the band so I could spread it out and see just how big the fabric was. It, it, was, it was large. It was a lot more fabric than I expected once I had cut off all the elastic, and I had a nice big thing to work with. And, 
I didn't have a pattern, so I decided to just drape the fabric on me and see exactly what kind of shape I wanted. And I marked a few places with some Sharpie, and I just figured out exact a, a kind of semi idea of what shape cloak silhouette I wanted. And here I ha is me making the hood. So I decided to just take two corners of fabric that had already been stitched together, make the fitted sheet, and I decided to pin it again, but to more towards my head shape. And here I have, I am trying it on to see if it's the exact shape I wanted. It wasn't exactly. I was hoping for something fluffier towards the end. And don't mind me, I'm eating pretzels. I usually eat when I'm working. And, but I did like the length that I got. And I was definitely was hoping that once it was attached, it would give a more of a fluff to it. It didn't. It was more straight. And I look pretty fabulous like this, I guess. I don't know. I gotta stop doing that. Oh, and here's me where I stitched on the shoulder. So I marked, here's what I pinned on the shoulder, not stitched. So I pinned exactly where it would meet my arm's length because I wasn't making sleeves. So I pinned, like I took a little bit of fabric, I pinched it and then I pinned exactly where I wanted it to be. And it'll, it'll make sense, but here's me stitching it on, I guess I was watching TV. And I usually sew and watch TV at the same time. Oh, part two. Nice. We are at part two, which I call the Warrior Wings. So Hippolyta's cloak design, or the one one cloak, had this weird triangular shape that I really liked. Because it kind of looked like wings, but it was also very geometric. And I decided I was going to trace onto the fabric to get that exact shape. I wasn't going to cut out fabric and sew it on. That was going to be too much work. I didn't have that much fabric, but I cut out some shapes on some cardboard. I only ended up using the bigger ones, not the smaller ones. It was, see, I wanted it to look a little bit like these. So here's my setup. I put some cardboard underneath the fabric and I just moved the cardboard up as I, as I went along and I pinned the fabric to the cardboard as I was going to trace the wing shape on. Yeah, wait, trace the wing shape on. I started at the corner and that probably wasn't the best because by the, towards I, by the time I got towards the middle, it started getting out a little more crooked towards some places, but it wasn't overly noticeable except to me. It was just, this is a long journey of me just... Me just tracing. I did this for at least three days. I watched a lot of Doctor Who. So, I definitely recommend do, starting this early in the day instead of doing it in the evening like I w I kept doing. I would start at like 5 and then I'd give up by 7. So about, And then we, of course I was watching TV and being completely distracted and not doing anything correctly. Oh, here's the front panel. So this is the part that would be draping over my bodice instead of on my back. Now that's where I made my major mistake and I'll show you guys later. And this is me with the hood and I think I put cardboard in between to make sure I didn't draw Sharpie in between. Here we are with part three, and this is basically the same as part two, but I went to the store and bought paint. So I bought silver paint, gold paint, fabric paint, of course. I got some more Sharpies because I ran out and had to replace some old ones. And I also got some stuff that I didn't quite need yet, but it was for a future project, perhaps. So this time, instead of working on cardboard, I decided to stretch out and oh, across my kitchen table since nobody was really using it at the time. And I definitely retraced, which made a huge difference in design. You can see the huge difference from the old Shar old U Sharpie that I was already using and then the brand new Sharpie that I traced over. It definitely added some texture and I wanted those deep dark lines to contrast against the gray fabric. Here's me working on my final piece on the hood. This took a few days too. Way too long. So here we have the first third of paint. So I decided to go with gold stripes at the top of each pair. So instead of doing the entire thing gold, I decided to just do a thin stripes because I wanted at first, I was thinking about just making it nice and simple. Some gold on the tops. I did eventually change my mind about that though. Yeah, but it looked really nice and it was really quite easy and satisfying to do. It was just nice and simple. Oh, oh here's my cat. This is Orion. He's needy. He likes me sometimes. And yes, I'm wearing Hall I was wearing Halloween socks in April. I it's six months early, I guess. That's not too bad. I wear my socks year-round. Here's me working on the paint again, except I had to slowly scoot it and then bunch it a bunch of fabric on the chair. But I would have to wait for it to dry, and it takes about four hours to dry, and it was exhausting to just, like, paint and then completely forget about it and then come back. 
So here we have where the shoulder stitch was. So the shoulder stitch kind of marks where it's on the front of me and on the back. And I painted the gold stripes towards the stitch so they would meet in the middle so you can kind of see a difference in between the silhouettes and the design. The only difference is that when it's on my shoulders, it doesn't actually line up straight. It lines up sideways. It's really awkward. I didn't notice it. Oh, and this is me putting cardboard between the hood so I didn't get paint on the inside on the other side. I also recommend putting cardboard on top of your table because I actually got paint on my table, which I'm going to point to in a second. I don't know why it's taking me so long. How long does it take for me to realize that I put, needed to put cardboard? Yeah, I, I painted the thing to make sure. Wow, I I don't realize. Okay, there, see, you could see paint on the table where it's stuck. This th fabric is thin and paint will go through it. So whatever you're painting on is going to affect your cloak, whether it's through sticking or through getting paint on the surface that you're painting on. Oh, for some paint montage. And here is part four. So I wanted to put a stripe at the bottom of the cloak. And this is me making the draft. So I basically what I did is I got a piece of paper and I and I cut out different strips along the way until I got the exact shape I wanted. I wasted a lot of paper doing this. So I, if you have drafting paper, use that. Don't use printer paper like I did. And then I pinned where I wanted the angles to be and I pinned it to the cloak so I can get the exact length and how much fabric I was going to need. Since I wasn't, I was just using plain fabric because I didn't have any gold fabric, nor did I have a bunch of fabric. I collect scrap fabrics and hope that that's what's going to be useful in the future. It's kind of a hoarder tendency. And so I definitely recommend don't sew the, the stripe. I, if you could get some gold ribbon and do this, I would recommend just getting a very wide gold ribbon or silver if you wanted and putting and doing the exact same thing I did, but not this obviously so this is where i cut out the strips to according to their length and i pinned them to a, some white fabric just an old t-shirt and then i was going to cut out around the pattern that i'd built and i was going to keep them pinned together i did number them in what order they needed to be pinned so here i started here's the first part it's attached to two so i have them all numbered and i sewed them together on one side and I stitched the beginning on one side that way when it's when I paint it and then attach it to the thing I won't have to worry about trying to close it off when I attach it and then it'll be easier to just like maybe I'll glue it on it's probably a bad idea but not quite sure what I'm gonna do yet but it definitely looks more and more like the stripe I wanted pointed with that Wonder Woman emblem kind of idea. And here we have me going to paint the wings of the fabric. Oh, I also uh, painted the stripe gold with the leftover gold fabric paint I had from painting the smaller bits of the stripe. So I just have to slowly go through um, and I only painted on cardboard that way I didn't get paint all over my thing and see this is where I had laid out the cloak and I started putting the silver fabric paint to fully color in the wings but I didn't fully color them in I just kind of squirted a little bit and then like gave it a rough edge because I was attempting to just give it a shine definitely added more texture than I thought it was going to and I probably put a little too much 
but I did like how it turned out. So, you know, experimenting is great, just as long as you don't get mad with the finished product, I guess. And ladies and gentlemen, now it is time for more paint. the completely painted cloak all stretched out oddly enough this is more silver than the rest of it I don't know if it's just the angle on that not really sure I care though however I'm I'm going to be attaching that to where I pinned it originally here I have attached the stripe to approximately where it was. It's definitely not as bent as much as it was in the thing, especially with like this whole extra thing. <laughs> like, did my thing shrink when I was painting? It's very possible my thing shrank when I was painting it. So I guess that's a warning to those who might be copying me. Be make sure that it's extra long, I guess. Just in case it does shrink too much. But now I have all of this extra and I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. We added the stripe. And I used a hot glue gun as evidenced by that. And because I, I was originally going to sew it on, but then I realized that might look really bad on the flip side of the cloak. It was also going to take a really long time. Because I have a fear, because I, I hand sew everything. It is a little crooked though, I noticed. Like, just a smidge, and I don't know if it's like super noticeable. Mm, I don't think it's all that noticeable. Maybe it's just me who thinks it's crooked. Does it look crooked to anyone else? Is it just me? Am I imagining it? I don't know, but it looks really great. It adds a nice pop of color, and it's gonna look really great once I present it when it's all done. It's gonna look great. So here I had attached a lining on the inside of the cloak because I didn't like how stuff stuck to the inside when I had painted the top with the silver. And I didn't like how that was going to touch my head. So I put a little bit of the extra gray fabric I had to line the inside of the cloak. Unfortunately, I did not have enough fabric to actually line the entire cloak like I would have liked to. Until later I found out I did have extra fabric somewhere, but at the same time, I didn't know. I also pinned the edges of the entire cloak to sew, which took me two whole days i really need to get over my fear of a machine a sewing machine and just use the sewing machine instead of hand sewing everything all right Ugh. okay so here i had repaired where i was going to put the straps now i just lined up where i thought it was going to be i did you know put on the cloak a few times and mark where i needed to put the straps in line with my shoulders here's my lovely snap kit that i got literally the day I needed it, when I used for my Wonder Woman boots. I did make those myself. I do not have a tutorial for that. I apologize. And so making the snaps is going to be hard work. And it was 
It requires a hammer. We have everything attached. And I did have to reinforce the back of the snaz with hot glue because they started tearing through the fabric because it's so flimsy. <laughs> Which I didn't realize it would be such a problem, honestly. But I guess I have never worked with such a thin material before. Keep in mind, this is what the product looked like before. And that's the end of my video, guys. Uh, I kind of hope you liked how it turned out. I did make a few mistakes. Like, I did not realize until the end, until I'd finished filming the whole photo shoot with my friends, that a strap had actually broke. Like, the snap had, like, tore through the fabric. Like, I mentioned it was flimsy, and I thought I'd reinforced it well with glue, but I didn't. And that was, a, I noticed that was broken, like, the, by the entire video. But I don't think it's too noticeable unless you're actually paying attention, which I guess you are now. Um, I also made a few mistakes, like, I don't know why, but the cloak was really heavy towards the end, and I think it was where the fabric was attached with glue. I also would have worked on the design a bit better on the front, because it doesn't line up, uh, vertically, it's horizontally, and I didn't quite like that. But overall, I really liked how this turned out, and I hope you guys liked it too. Yeah. Do you ever look at someone and wonder, what is going on inside their head? I will bathe in your fear. Daughters of Themyscira! Show him your fear!